the bear by mark anthony smith the coffee at the platform buffet is far too expensive so we wait on the cold green cast iron bench without a drink the train shouldn't be too long anyway I look at my son with his ragged bear. He takes him everywhere, but has yet to give the soft toy a name. Since he started primary school earlier this year, Philip has become far more argumentative. He'll be five soon. We sit and wait on platform two. I ruffle the boy's hair as he talks to his bear. There's a man on the opposite platform, drinking from a disposable cup the steam rises as he removes the lid to cool his drink. He looks at his watch, and I'm sure I recognise him. I think about shouting over. The name Simon is on my lips. Then he looks up. He isn't the man I know from working in the assorted sweets factory. I feel embarrassment. There's the memory of the taste of licorice somewhere in my mouth. Then I look away. I think about train journeys where I'd pass several stations without realising we'd pass them. The novel soon becomes habitual, I think. Philip's dad and I had bought our son the bear when he was born. He was so small then. Our son clung so tightly to the bear when his dad finally left. Our love had grown cold as our baby needed attention. Philip's dad was never one for kids, but he didn't really know that until it was too late. He didn't want to grow up. I really want a cigarette. The wind blows through the exposed platform as it whips up leaves. I smile at the thought of excuses for train delays. Philip is looking into the bear's eyes and telling him about Grandma. If we're good, then there'll be sweets and cake. Yes, as much cake as you can eat. But you mustn't go through her cupboards. I smile. Philip always drags my mum's pots and pans out. He always makes a mess, and she never has the patience for him. I look at my watch while shuffling my feet to keep warm. Mummy? I look to the right. It's coming, Philip. Come on. The train rolls in. I grab his shoulder as the doors open. A few people get off with suitcases and look relieved or confused. Then we step aboard the carriage, and I steer Philip to the left. We find our reserved seats on the quiet coach. Philip sits by the window. I'm just putting our small bag in the overhead compartment when he starts to cry. What's the matter? He sobs. I haven't got bear. I calm him and then tell him to wait. I hurry off to the bench on the platform. There are still passengers alighting with suitcases. The man with the cup is sat where we had sat. Excuse me, that's our bear. I almost apologize. The man, quite alone, looks up. Oh, you're quite mistaken, he frowns. I bought this bear in real. I can feel my anger rising. No, it really is our bear. I look at Philip for some kind of reassurance. He bangs on the window with his small fist. His words are silent. Then the train pulls away, and I really feel the cold.